All right, folks, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to sharpen the iron wheel 200 grain single bevel uh, with bleeders. So this is the head right here that we're gonna be doing. Um, and I just wanna show you, I've already done half of one of these. I'm gonna give you kind of before and after because these are brand new. Um, they come sharp from iron wheel. I mean, they're, they're, these things are hunt ready, they're sharp, but if we rotate this, you can see a little bit of, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit of machine work. And I want these things stropped. Now you can see that bleeder right there. I've already done that bleeder. This side's been done. Okay. This bleeder has not. I mean, it's sharp, but it hasn't been what I would call stropped or polished. This side right here. So you can see the difference. Nice and polished. Now, I want to tell you one thing about the iron wheels. You have this plane, and then you have this plane. Okay. So you got two different planes on this head here and here. So and you can see after I've, you know, sharpened and stropped and polished this, I still have this plane and this plane. Now there's very little cutting, what I would call cutting surface here, but it's there. Okay. You can see it right here. And here's why I mentioned this. It's very difficult with a, with a single plane sharpening device to get this plane and that plane. Okay. Uh, you would have to, you know, mount your broadhead in the device, sharpen this plane. And I'm assuming you'd have to readjust to get the correct angle and then do this plane, okay? So I'm not saying it can't be done. It, it can be done, but it's it's time consuming, it's difficult. As a matter of fact, you may have to disassemble the broadhead all the way down, which you have to disassemble it anyway uh, to, to go ahead and sharpen it the way I do. Um, but uh, I'm using the KME and I can actually do this plane and this plane at the same time because of the rotation of the KME device. Now, so let's put this back. Um, I want to go ahead and pull this one out. So I've already disassembled this, this head, and this is what you have to do. Uh, now, if you've got a, an iron wheel that does not have bleeders, you don't have to do any disassembling. You can just you know, pull it out and, and get going. But this is a brand new head. You can see the machine marks here on those. When I say machine marks, I, I'm not sure what they're using, but, but they're sharp. Don't get me wrong, they're sharp. I'm sure you've seen videos on, on, um, on, on here that from the box, these things are super sharp. You can even see on the, on the back side, the flat side of where they've buffed that out with something substantially fine, right? But here's the key, it is still flat, single bevel. A big thing that I see a lot of times, don't ever, ever, ever put an angle on this flat side. A single bevel, it's meant to be flat. Otherwise, you've just made your single bevel head into a double bevel. It's not gonna, you're not, your, your cut angles, not gonna be the same, it's not gonna work as it's designed as far as rotation. Well, actually it'd be this way, not that way. But anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, so let me put this stuff over here. So basically what you've got is you've, you've got your disassembled head. Now this is something else I, I do. I wanna weigh this before I get started. Okay, got my scale here. 
And this is a 200 grain head, 190.1. I want to do it a couple times just to make sure. That one says 190.2. One ninety point one, one ninety point two, one ninety point one. So we're just going to go with one ninety point one, and what I'm going to do is write that down. Um, for reference later. All right, so let's get the scale out of the way. So we're using the KME device. This is the new one with the adjustable uh, bevel angle plate on it. You, you need this with the single bevel uh, iron wheels because this is at a 32 degree angle. Um, here's the neat part about this. It really doesn't matter what the angle is. You're gonna be able to find it. So let's go ahead and mount this up. And this is one of the reasons why I, I go ahead and reassemble the head is so I can index it every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to index it right off the back of the ferrule right here. Okay. That's how I'll be indexing. Sorry, let me flip it over. So right off the back of the ferrule. Right there. And these are um, what's called their delta jaws. They have a cut to them, which is, you know, better grasp these shorter profile heads. So we, we tighten this up. You know, it ain't got to be super tight, but you want it to hold it. I mean, you're not gonna hurt. This is this is like A2 steel, it's aluminum, so it's not gonna hurt it. But we're indexed off the back. The reason we do this is when we flip it over to the other side, I can do the same indexing, and it'll be uh, as close as we can get, right? You can do it with the blade out, um, but for me, I, I wanna be able to index it. now. Here, here's the critical part about this. We want to make sure that our sharpener is set up for the correct angle. So that Sharpie's dead. So we get our Sharpie out here and we're gonna mark this up. And I go all the way to the tip. All right. So we got that marked up. This is set up uh, for this other head that I did. So it should be pretty close. And I'm just using the cardboard with the compound. And the reason is I just want to pull back and see how much of that Sharpie came off. And as you can see, just about all of it. As a matter of fact, it did come off here. So we're, we're really close. now. If not good enough. All right. Now I want to show you the, this secondary plane of this head. I'm going to put the head on the paper and then I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it. That's exaggerated, but I'm going to rotate it. So this plane is now on there and see what we've got. It's not quite perfect we took off a bit of that Sharpie. So let's go one more time. Let's put it on here, rotate it. And so see, now we've taken more of that Sharpie off and we're gonna go one more time, rotate it. The Sharpie is pretty much gone, right? So now knowing that, I wanna go back and do one more slide on the main 
Now look at there. The Sharpie's all gone. So, so now we know we're at the right angle. If you, if you aren't taking that Sharpie all the way off with one or two, you know, strokes, you need to adjust your angle. Of course, it's adjusted here. Screw, you move this plate back and forth to get your angle set up right. If you're only taking off Sharpie from the, you know, the front edge, you need to, you know, move your, your roller back. If you only taking it from the back edge and it never makes up there, then you need to move it forward, whatever. This is, this is a big thing. You got to get this thing set up at the right angle. Now, so these heads are super sharp, but they do have those little marks from, you know, the factory. But what I'm going to do is this is 1500 grit, right? And then I'm using PB Blaster, WD-40 would probably be better. I just want something wet. Uh, if you're using a stainless head, you could actually even use water. The only purpose of this is to float any steel fragments that are in there, okay? Now, I also wanna make sure there's no grit on my roller so it's nice and smooth. Sounds like there's something on my glass. So let's clean this off real quick. All right. And, and I've mentioned this in a form or two, but so when I say glass, you can see this glass moving around. This is on my bench. This is a piece of glass that came off of, I think it was some kind of coffee end table. Uh, it's, it's not super thick, uh, but I'm sure it's some kind of tempered glass. It's, it's pretty heavy. Um, meaning it is not going to break real easy. So make sure it's clean so everything rolls smooth on there. All right. Now, 1500 grit. A little bit of PB. Now, I'm going to go backwards. One, two, three. So that's 10 strokes, okay? Now, the reason I count strokes is I want them to be even, uh, you know, on either side. So, so I kind of know what I'm doing here. Uh, now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to rotate it and pull this back. And what I'm doing is I'm hitting this second angle here. And look, I'm not putting a lot of force on this. I'm just rotating it enough to get that angle correct. So now it's flat, rotate. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the full width of this area right here that's coming off, okay? Now we're gonna go back to the main blade. All right, so that was 30. So now, as you're looking at this, you can see some of those marks are starting to go away. It's getting a little bit more polished. You can see right here, just like the Sharpie, the angle, you know, we need to do a little bit more work. I don't know if you can see that. Same thing on this. We need to do a little bit more work. And look, this is real time. This is not edited. I may fast forward some of this video, but I mean, literally that was 10 strokes and then 30 strokes. Okay. And when you feel the back of the, the blade, you know, you're not going to feel a big, huge burr, uh, you know, like people talk about. It's just not going to be this big, nasty burr. Okay. So let's keep going.
All right? Even more progress. Again, right here is starting to look real nice and polished. Up here, you can see it's working its way up that blade. I mean, this is hard steel, and all we're trying to do is just get those those machine marks uh, out from the, the factory polishing. Of course, this is the same thing you would do if you were to be shooting through this through targets, if you were to be shooting this through, um, you know, animals. You know, obviously you want to resharp. So let's look at this. We're getting really close on this. Right. And just by that little bit, I am starting to feel just a little bit of a burr. Um, so, but I'm not quite ready yet to take this off the back. Okay. So let's go at it a little bit more. All right, so the oil is kind of deceiving on this, but but I've gotten this to where I'm comfortable with the marks that are not there anymore with 1500s. What I'm gonna do, and you may have seen this on other videos. Now this is, this is kind of critical on single bevel. I'm gonna move my glass to the edge, right? I'm putting the paper right here, and I'm taking the flat, the flat side of the blade, and I'm gonna lay it flat, not at an angle, and I'm pulling that off. All right, flat, pulling it off. And what we're doing is we're, we're taking this burr off of the back. I'm not, you know, definitely never ever lay this thing down on the flat bevel side and, and, and do it. You're gonna, you're gonna ruin your head. Uh, well, you, you'll never get it sharp. So again, pull it off, pull it off. Now, at that point, I can feel a, the roll or the burr on this side, on both sides. So now, let's go to the next grit. So this is 2000. And at this point, we're just trying to polish out whatever the 1500 put in there, okay? And and I'll actually sit here and, and we'll go. So the first few strokes, after, when, I, when I do this, I wanna go back, 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 and what we're doing is we're trying to line up that steel that we just rolled over from the back side, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll get it, again, we're gonna rotate it on to this other angle. Okay, so now that I feel like I've gotten everything lined back up, I can sit here and, and look back and forth. Some people say, man, don't ever go back and forth. Here's the deal. I'm putting no weight on this. I mean, literally, it's, it's just the weight of the KME device and the bra head itself. And what I'll do is I'll rotate it again and I'll hold it at this secondary angle and again, I'm just holding it enough to hold it in place. And I'm gonna go back and forth. And, and all we're doing, again, we're not trying to remove a ton of metal. We're trying to polish up what's already there. Okay. So let's look at this. And now we're getting so we st we're still maintaining the second 
angle at the, the leading part of this head. It's getting nice and polished. So we're getting those. Again, the backside is, is still flat, which we want to maintain it and keep it flat. Right? Okay. So I'm gonna go just a few more strokes. I'm gonna go backwards from now on just to So that's enough with 2000. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock this off on the back side. So I'm gonna move my paper over here. We're gonna get the flat. And again, you can feel where this edge is turned up. Nice and polished, but we have an edge. But don't worry about that now because we're going to move it back into position in just a second. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean this off. And we're going with our cardboard and polishing compound. Now, this is polishing compound gray this has gotten at harbor freight uh, i'm sure you could find this at other places there's gray and then there's a white uh the gray is is uh i think fine and then the white is ultra fine but what i'm going to do the first thing well actually not the first always go backwards on 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 the compound uh again you can use a leather strop for this i don't have one don't use one uh may get into a leather strop down down the road but so let's take this and go backwards everything is backwards now now look here i'm going to do this fast and it may look like i'm going forwards and backwards but trust me with the polishing compound and the cardboard every time i move forward this blade is coming off the paper and then it's going back down. That's super exaggerated, but that's what's happening. Okay. So back, 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 we do this. Uh, I don't even count. I just go until it feels good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it and we want to polish the other. that leading angle. All right. I mean, you can go and go and go and go. There's no, there's no sense in it though. This is pretty daggum sharp as it is. So this is nice and polished. You can see that. And the thing is, it's sharp all the way to this tip right here. Because, you know, there is this first angle cut right here that if you have a fixed device it will not get here unless you you know you have to change it or whatever um so let's remove this and i want to weigh it because initially we were at 190.1. And I'm just wiping this off to make sure there's. So 
So 190.1, so let's put it on the scale. And it still says 190.1. One ninety point one. One ninety point one. So basically, we didn't remove anything from this. Uh, now, let me tell you why I weigh these. If you, if you're, if you're really having to grind in and and, and sharpen out, maybe a, a rolled edge or or a small chip or who knows what. But if you if you really need to get on this, with say. 400, 600, 800, uh, 1,000, 12, 15, 2,000, and then polish, you're going to start removing. And I want to know what the starting weight was, 190. Then I weigh it after I do one side. And whatever I lost, I want to take that from the other side. So that thing, that way we have an evenly you know, distribution of, 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 of weight across the, the head of the blade. I guess you could call it a blueprinting or balancing or whatever. But anyway, now, so let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to try to use my shirt here and dry this off a little bit so we can see the difference. All right. This is the side we just did. And that's the factory side. Okay, Let me put my glasses on so I can see. All right, again, factory side. And and when on the factory cut, man, you can really see this change in your in your in that blade angle. It's still there. Okay, we just polished it up. Because I'm telling you, that little bit right there is cutting. It is absolutely cutting. Otherwise, we would just sharpen the back eighth inch of the head, right? So nice and polished. On this example, I probably could have went a little bit further with the 1500 initially, because there's just a few tiny marks in there. You know, still left. From the factory. Right? But anyway, that's, that's, that's kind of the process, again, of doing this. Now, I want to show you how to do um, the bleeder blade of this. Um, I may end up pausing the video. Um, I actually need to run in the house and, and do some stuff but um i'm gonna come back and we'll talk about sharpening the bleeder okay if you have bleeders because well they need to be sharp too right all right we'll see you in just a little bit all right folks back with the bleeder blade uh, so i've went ahead and installed this into the device and you can see how i've mounted it the reason we want this is because angle this blade we want it as perpendicular as we can get or not perpendicular as parallel as we can get with the face of the sharpener of course the angle should remain the same from the way we had it set up previously so we want to check that so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to the sharpie Mark him up. And I want to get it. And you'll be able to find this angle. And as you can see, that Sharpie's pretty much gone. Okay, if I keep going, it will go away. Right. Actually, 
I need to adjust the angle just a bit. See how there's a little bit of Sharpie on the tip and most of it's already starting to get a little shiny back here. So that means I need to adjust the angle slightly on this. There we go, just one little push out. And here's the thing on these jaws, again, you want it tight, but you you know don't you don't have to muscle it down. We just don't want this thing moving. And it's not going to because we're not applying a ton of pressure. So let's go back to the 1500. And we do the same process. Um, 1500, 2000, then we'll polish it. Uh, okay. And you can see that the whole edge, I don't know if you can see that, but the whole width of that, and I'm going back and forth now to super light, but the whole width is making contact. Okay. There it is. Now the same thing with the bleeders. You want to, you know, get this on the edge. And take that off the back. And I've actually got my finger on the bleeder holding it flat. So now we're going to go to the 2000 and do the same thing. So that is done. So let's have a look. Nicely polished. There's the back side. And trust me. The joker is sharp. That's one thing I noticed about the the these heads is the bleeders, even though they're sharp, they're just not quite a, a, as sharp, you know, as they could be. Um, when we're talking sharp, let me see if I've got some. See if I've got some some paper here. And that's driving right through that paper. Just as easy as you please. And the same thing with the head itself. So this is the, the factory edge. Yeah, it cuts right through it. But then again, the edge that we worked I mean, right through it.
people talk about shaving. So here's the factory edge. You know, it, it, it shaves and then of course the polished edge that we did. Uh, you know, it, it, it's sharp. And not to mention this leading edge. So, so the little tiny leading edge. I don't know if you can see that trail of hair back there, but I mean, it's popping them off. Okay. So that is uh, iron wheel, single bevel, sharpening. Again, if you want to go 2,000, 2,500 grit, I mean, you could go as far as you want. My whole goal is to not remove, you know, a ton of metal, remove as least amount as possible. And, and here's the thing, when you, when you go through bone, when you go through dirt, when you go through sand, you're gonna have to remove some of this stuff. That's why you, you measure it or weigh it. So if you take, a grain off of this side, when you sharpen it, you want to sharpen and take a grain off of that side. If it takes more off of this side to get it sharp, then go back and redo this one until you get an equal amount off of both sides. Uh, you know, um, that's all I would say about that. Now, just reassemble this thing. Uh, this is a Torx. T6 head that that, uh, that comes out and holds everything together. The tolerances on these things are super tight, by the way. Um, the, the machining and, and, and I guess you would say the craftsmanship of these heads are just... I mean, they're, they're, they're really good. All right, it took a second, but we got it. We got it all together. Put the screw back in. Come on, screw. One thing I will tell you is please, 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 especially if you're messing with these brand new, you gotta be, you gotta be super careful. I mean, I mean, they're sharp, sharp, sharp. Um, while you're sharpening them, after you sharpen them, they're going to be sharp. So just, so just handling these things is. I mean, I, I hate to say, man, it's dangerous, but, you know, uh, trip to the ER to get some stitches would not be out of the question if you're not really paying attention. Okay, so this is that head that's that we finished. It looks real similar to the other head. So... That's the side that we polished, sharpened. That's the polished and sharpened bleeder. Factory edge, factory bleeder. Polished, polished, factory. It's very similar result to the first one that I did like this. You can see this is the 
polished and the polished bleeders on the opposite side on this one. And then there's the factory. Factory. Polished. And again, notice the angle on the front of the blade is still there. Very distinct here. All right. But anyway, that's how we do or how I do single bevel um, iron wheel broadheads. Um, put them all back in a little home here. Put my little T6 in here. But anyway, if you got any questions, ask me. Now, the, the iron wheel double bevel heads are going to be a little bit different. And, and actually, it's not a whole lot different. It's actually the same concept, except you're, you're sharpening two different bevels. So instead of really paying attention and trying to get a burr on the single bevel side and then turning it over and cutting it off, what you have to do is you have to polish and grind one side, the burr will start, but then you have to tip it over and you're not just taking that burr off, you have to polish this, get that burr, and it will take the burr off, then you'll start a burr on the second side. Then you can move to your grit change and you're doing this equal on both sides until you get to where you're getting to your smaller grits. And at that point, you're sharpening one side of the head, you flip it over and you're doing equal amounts. So you're, what you're doing is you're getting that burr and you're straightening it out, 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 out. And then you go into polish and you're polishing your burr straight, all backstrokes, equal on both sides. All the way down until you're getting one stroke, barely touching even the polishing compound. And that's how you get a, a, a double bevel head sharp. It took me forever to learn it. Um, but anyway, we may talk about single bevel heads in, in the future. Um, but anyway, like I said, if you got any questions, you know, shoot it to me. Um, like, subscribe. Uh, I may uh, end up doing another video um, on curved type heads um, with forward bleeders. Um, this is a El Cheapo, but th th these heads seem to be, you know, popular or these type of heads. Uh, so, and they can be difficult to sharpen because they're rounded. But anyway, uh, has nothing to do with iron wheel heads. All right. Thanks folks. Have a good one.